Genesis chapter 32. And this is a familiar portion of scripture that many Christians have either heard a message on this topic or read this in their Bible. Genesis chapter 32 verse 24. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Notice that Jacob did not say Esau. When he went before his father, working with his mother, Rebekah, deceiving, Jake, uh, deceiving um, Isaac. But Jacob is not saying his name is Esau here. He's telling this man that he's wrestling with, this angel that he's wrestling with, I'm Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and has prevailed. If you're going to prevail with God, if you're going to be changed, if you're going to have a name change, if you're going to prevail and receive the blessing of God, you're going to have to spend some time with God alone. Alone with God. You have to come to this place where you get away from all the distractions, where you can focus your attention only on God. It's in this place of loneliness or alone with God, that you will learn a lot about yourself. In that quietness, in that stillness, much will be revealed to you. You will begin to understand your weakness. All your weaknesses will begin to come to the surface and God will begin to show you who you are. And hopefully, like Jacob, you won't be dishonest. You'll say who you really are. You're not going to receive anything from God until you're honest. Got to be honest. Jacob was left alone. Nobody's with him. He's all alone with God. All night long, this wrestling went on. And remember what Paul the Apostle said, we wrestle not with flesh and blood. There's a wrestling going on today. Now we're not wrestling
with God, are we? See, Jacob did not get his change until he surrendered. We are in the night season. Jacob was in the night season, but the scripture says the day was breaking. It was just about dawn. They say the darkest time is just before the dawn. The light was getting ready to shine. The sun was getting ready to come up. And Jacob was wrestling. But he wasn't wrestling with his enemy. He was wrestling with God. He was wrestling with the servant of God, the messenger of God, if you please. He was wrestling against the very thing or very one that came to help him, that came to bring a blessing. See, God sent the angel to Jacob to bless him, to change him. But Jacob wrestled with God. Instead of just receiving, instead of surrendering, Jacob wrestled. Paul the Apostle said, we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but principalities, wicked spirits. We are wrestling, but are we wrestling with evil? Are, or are we wrestling against the devil? Are we wrestling with principalities? Or are we wrestling with God? Are we replying against God? Are we fighting against the potter? Are we struggling and resisting the will of God? Can the clay say to the potter, What doest thou with me? The scripture says, When Jesus was walking on the water, the disciples were scared and they were afraid and they thought they saw a ghost. Many today are wrestling and resisting the truth. They're resisting and struggling with the Lord. They're wrestling against the messenger of God. They're wrestling with the ministers of God. They're wrestling against God. They're resisting the truth. Instead of surrendering to the truth. Instead of receiving the truth with meekness, the engrafted truth with meekness, they resist the truth, the scripture says. Now we are in that night season. But the light is getting ready to shine. It was when the sun came up. It's when the dawn broke. It's when the light of the natural light began to shine that Jacob realized he was still wrestling, but when he looked, he didn't see anything. This must have been quite a shock. When Jacob realized he was wrestling with something that he could not see with his natural eyes. Must have been a tremendous shock to the point where Jacob stopped, became still. But not before God touched him. I tell you, folks, if we don't stop wrestling against God, if we don't stop rejecting the truth, if we don't stop fighting the truth and resisting the Lord, God's going to touch us, not in a good way, but we might end up with a limp. God wanted Jacob to know, whenever he walked from that day forward, Reminding him, it wasn't just, people think that this uh, thing that God did to Jacob was just a, was just a, uh, a physical appearance. When he would walk, he would walk different. No, this was something that Jacob could feel. His hip was now out of joint. I know what that's like to some degree. I've got a little bit of a hip out of joint. And when I walk, I can feel the bone uh, 
scraping against another bone, and it, it can be uncomfortable at times. But I think that Jacob had something that was more uncomfortable than me. But God wanted Jacob to be reminded, and when others would see Jacob limping, he would tell them the story of how that he was changed by God. There must be where God does something in our life that the world can tell there's something different about this person. None of this is going to happen until we come to a place where we're alone with God. I'm going to say this again. Jacob didn't have to receive his, his joint being out of place. He didn't have to receive that. He could have just received the blessing of God. He could have just been changed right from the beginning. But he wrestled all night long. You see, when the angel came, when the man came and wrestled with Jacob, it was night. It was dark. Jacob was already afraid. Maybe Jacob thought that he was wrestling with his brother in the night and he couldn't see. Maybe he thought he was wrestling with one of the his brother's uh, soldiers or one of his brother's, uh, those that were with his brother. He was scared. He thought his brother was going to kill him. So Jacob, without question, was full of fear. And it's amazing how that when we walk in fear, we can be so delusional. Amen? We can't afford to be walking in fear. We are living in a time when people are delusional, when people are... I'm seeing it more and more, where people are becoming more paranoid. Everybody's out to get them. Because the government has not given the people any reason to trust the government because they keep lying to the people. The people become paranoid. But I tell you the truth. The Lord will never do you wrong. He didn't come to do Jacob wrong. He didn't come to hurt Jacob. He came to bless Jacob. Now Jesus, when he was getting ready to go up into heaven after the resurrection, after he had come back and he'd been with the disciples for several days, the scripture says he went up in a cloud. Amen? He went up into heaven. And the scripture says he blessed them there before he went up into heaven. The word bless has to do with being happy. We need the blessing of God. Jacob received the blessing of God and he was changed to Israel. He never walked the same again, not only in the physical, but the spiritual. He became a prince with God. The scripture says he prevailed with God. Friend, if you're going to prevail with God, you've got to surrender. <clears throat> you've got to be honest and you've got to surrender. The scripture tells us that after this experience that Jacob had, that when he saw his brother, the scripture says, Jacob, now Israel, bowed himself down. You understand? Jacob is entreating his brothers. He is entreating his brother's anger. He's entreating his brother's uh, hatred. He is trying to bring peace with his brother. Now, what we have today as the peacekeepers, that is not peace. It's impartial and it's, it's, it's not of God. I could go into a long message speaking about the peacekeepers of the United Nations, but they are not for peace. They are to bring in the new world order and they are the police state that's going to be the, the global police. And they work for the world government to bring about this one world government. But Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. 
And that's what Jacob was doing. He was trying to make peace with his brother. Now, was it Jacob because Jacob was changed that God made peace between him and his brother? God did not ever forgive Esau. The scripture says, though he sought carefully with tears for repentance, trying to find a place of repentance, God said, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. Esau never found forgiveness with God. He never was accepted by God. He was hated by God. But the scripture says that Jacob and Esau made peace. It wasn't Jacob that made peace with his brother as far as his own strength or his own wisdom. It wasn't altogether because God changed Jacob. It had to do with the fact the Bible says, listen, when a man's ways please the Lord, he'll make even his enemies to dwell at peace with him. Do you have some enemies, friend? Do you have those that are becoming enemies to you or against you? The scripture says, when your ways please the Lord, he'll make even your enemies to dwell at peace with you. You're not going to come into this place where you have peace with your enemies until you come into this place of alone with God, where you don't wrestle with God, but that you surrender to God and that you receive the blessing of God, that your life will be changed. God will make you a prince, praise the Lord. And the scripture says, Jacob prevailed with God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We can prevail with God. If we will prevail with God, God will give us peace with our enemies. That's what it means, brothers and sisters, to be a peacemaker. Praise God. God has not called us to be peacekeepers. He's called us to be peacemakers. Hallelujah. So our ways need to please the Lord. Amen. We need to walk uprightly. We need to walk in a way and in a manner that pleases the Lord. Jesus did always those things that please the Father. If we're going to please the Father, we must do what Jesus did. Jesus said, I do nothing of myself. I can of my own self do nothing. It says in the scripture, in Hebrews, it says, without faith it is impossible to please God. Enoch pleased God, the scripture says, and God took him because he pleased God. He walked with God. If we're going to be pleasing to the Lord, we got to walk with him. Amen. We got to come to the place where we surrender our life to God, where we don't walk in our own understanding. We don't lean to our own understanding, but in all our ways, we acknowledge the Lord and he directs our path. But I tell you the truth. You and I will never come to this place of a peacemaker, to this place where we become pleasing to the Lord until we get alone with God. We must be alone with Him. And it seems like that's the hardest thing to do. The scripture says, draw near to God and He'll draw near to you. I've found many times that when I get quiet and I'm alone with God and things begin to come to the surface, I don't really like what I see. But I know that if I'm honest and I tell the Lord, yes, Lord, I see it. I know it's there. You revealed it to me that God quickly takes it. Praise the Lord. He replaces it with his own life. He takes that thing, that weakness, that sin, whatever it might be, and he replaces it with his own divine nature. Nature. God is not out to destroy you. God is not out to hurt you. God wants to change you. To do an exchange with you. I like the revelation that Job received from God. At one point, Job thought that God was going to slay him. That God wanted to kill him. In fact, Job said these words. He says, Though he slay me, yet in him I'll put my trust. There's a place where Job says these words, and folks, if you can get a hold of this, it'll help you. Job said these words. Would he slay me? No, 
he would put life in me. God was killing that flesh in Job. God was bringing Job to the end of himself. It was when Job began to pray for those that were persecuting him. It's when Job began to pray for those that were against him, that God turned it around, amen? That God blessed Job. Understand that when Jesus tells us in the New Testament what we call the Beatitudes, he, he over and over he says, blessed, 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 blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Jesus tells us that these are the ones that are blessed. And he ends it up by saying, blessed are the peacemakers. Amen. He doesn't stop there. He says, blessed you are, happy are you, rejoice when you are persecuted. You're going to be persecuted for righteousness. But he didn't stop there either. He said, if your ways please the Lord, he'll make even your enemies to dwell at peace with you. Brothers and sisters, don't get to the place where you're persecuted, where you stop and you, you quit, where you get to the place where you freeze up, where you get to the place where you just don't want to go any further because the pressure becomes so great, because the persecution becomes so great. We need to become overcomers. We, we need to come to the place where we press through that. We need to get beyond that to the place where our ways please the Lord and he makes even our enemies to dwell at peace with us. Where we can love our enemies. Where we can do good to them that are against us. Where we can bless them that curse us. Where we can come to the place where we can be a blessing even to our enemies. Even to those that rise up against us. Even to those that are against us. That we can give to them the love of Christ. That we can heap coals of fire upon them. That we can be good to them even if they're not being good to us. We can come to the place where we are more than conquerors. Where we walk in the love of Christ. Where we walk in the love of God. Where we can overcome evil with good. We are more than conquerors through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We conquer evil. We conquer evil. The, 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 the wickedness around us. We even conquered the coldness and the lukewarmness uh, through the love of Christ. Uh, we need to be on fire for God. We need to be burning on this hour. We need to be on fire for the Lord. Amen. We need to be prevailing with God. We need to be princes with God. We need to prevail in this hour. Hallelujah. Praise God. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Amen. We need to be renewed in our spirits. We need a renewing. We need a charge from the Lord. We need the power of God. We need the love of God within us. Amen. Burning like a fire, praise God, that will cause us to be more passionate. Amen. Not only for the Lord, but passionate for the lost. God can put a burning fire within us. We can be a bright and a shining light in this hour, praise God. But we've got to come to the place where we're alone with God. We've got to come to the place where we get shut in with God. We've got to come to the place where we get alone with Him, amen, where God can begin to reveal to us what's in us, where He can reveal to us what our weaknesses are. God will search our hearts. He'll bring those things to the surface. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So don't be one of those in this hour that's wrestling against God. Don't be one of those in this hour that's resisting the truth. Be one of those in this hour, amen, that are being empowered by God as you surrender to God, amen. And God is changing you to the place where you can be on fire for the Lord and powerful in God and that you can even cause the enemy to flee 
The scripture says submit to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Praise God. We've heard that scripture quoted over and over. Just resist the devil and he'll flee from you. That's not what the Bible says, friend. The scripture says to submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. We need to submit ourselves to God. We need to surrender to God. We need a change from God. We need the power of God. We can do more in the amen through the power of God, through the strength of God. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. We got to get alone with God. Get alone with Him, brothers. Get alone with Him, sisters. Get alone with Him. Get alone with the great God of heaven. Let God do something in your life. Let God change you. Let God, hallelujah to God, let Him empower you. Let the Lord do something in your life. All oh, the world will know you've been with Jesus. We take knowledge they've been with Jesus. We perceive they're ignorant, just ignorant fishermen. They're not learned men, but we take knowledge they've been with Jesus. Look, look at the boldness these men have. Look how bold they are. We take knowledge that they've been with Jesus. Hallelujah. When's the last time you was with Jesus? When's the last time, amen, that you was with the Lord? When you got alone with Him and you felt His power, you felt His strength, you received from Him. When's the last time you got shut in with God in the secret place of the Most High? Under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Praise His name. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you today, God, for challenging us with your word. I pray, Lord Jesus, that somebody out there will be challenged. Somebody will be encouraged. Lord, that they'll get shut in with you. That they'll be get alone with you. Lord, even as Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him, Lord, until the breaking of the day. Lord, we know the breaking of the day, Jesus, is at hand. We know, Lord, even as the world is getting ready to go into ghost darkness, that your people, those that are more than conquerors, those that are prevailing with God, are going to walk in the light, Lord. They're going to walk in the day, even as you are in the light, God, and as the world is in darkness, your overcomers are going to walk in the light of the day of the presence of God in the truth. And while we walk in the light, Lord, we can give hope to those that walk in darkness. We can be a bright and a shining light, giving hope, Lord, to those that are sitting in the shadow of death. Lord, those that are getting used to the darkness, that we can be a bright and a shining light. We can arise and shine, Lord, for the glory has, that glory has come and the, the glory of the Lord has risen upon us, Lord, giving hope to the hopeless, healing the sick and the oppressed, Lord, the anointing, destroying the yoke, setting the captives free, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Glory to the name which is above every name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. 